Bruce Yang, and today in Homemade Science, we're looking at levitating objects in a stream of air. Now, this demonstration has been around for ages, and perhaps you've seen it maybe with a hair dryer and a ping pong ball. Now, another item that's recently become popular is floating a screwdriver in a stream of compressed air. Now, seeing how popular this demonstration became, I thought it might be fun to look around and see if we could find some other items that we could levitate. For example, here's this noisemaker. Let's try this one. Now, in my investigation, I followed three basic rules. Pretty good, right? Wrong. It says no strings. The objects can't touch the nozzle or any other surface. Many objects can stay aloft for a few moments, but then become unstable. My goal was to find objects that could stay aloft for at least 15 seconds. Quite a few objects were so stable they could have stayed aloft all day long. This first nozzle is good for being handheld, but the second nozzle is smaller and stays open all the time. I used it in this vise as an anchor. I could lock it in place and then simply adjust its airflow. Now, part of the challenge is finding the best angle for the airstream. For example, this bowl likes the stream to be directly vertical. Very stable. And if I put it on an angle, Now I'll start this turkey baster on an angle. Very stable. And it didn't seem too happy with that. Now one of the most difficult pieces I have is the soup ladle. Let me give it a try. The airflow needs to be directed on an angle, slightly off center. Eggs aren't quite as easy as a round ball, but they're still fairly easy. Like a ball, the airstream is below the egg. I found quite a few fruits and vegetables that worked well. For example, here's a cucumber. Notice in this piece that the airstream is aimed at the top of the cucumber. We'll explain why later. Now, I have found some bottles at work, and once again, the angle makes a difference. For example, this soda bottle likes it on an angle. Whereas this gallon jug works better if it's straight up and down. still has some liquid in it. Let's take that out. Try it again. <laughs> there we go.
So how is it that these objects stay aloft? Well, it comes down to balancing the forces acting on it. We have gravity pulling it down while the force going up is applied by the airstream, the atmosphere, or it's a combination of both. Bernoulli's principle helps to explain this. As air is blown over the top of the paper, the pressure on the upper side is reduced, so the atmosphere underneath the paper helps to lift it up. So when I blow air alongside this bat, there's a decrease in pressure on this side, so the atmosphere actually pushes the bat into that airstream. You can actually feel the atmosphere pushing the ball into that stream. So in this case, the ball is actually being lifted by the upward force of the air hitting it and then going around it, while the atmosphere holds it in the airstream. Now that may make sense for the balls and the bowl, but it doesn't quite fit what happens with the bat. To get lift in this case, we really need to take a look at air going across the top of a surface. Now I hooked up a funnel to the end of the nozzle here. If I squeeze the handle, of course, air comes out. We can see that if I put a few ribbons in there. In this case, air moving across the top of the ball reduces the pressure and the atmosphere underneath the ball is actually what's lifting it up. Well, how does that explain the levitating of this bat? We weren't blowing air on the top, we were actually blowing it on the side. Well, that's where the Coando effect comes into play. And basically what it tells us is that an airflow will follow the curve of a surface. So, if I blow this air alongside the ball, watch what the ribbon does. The ribbon shows us the air is actually moving across the top of the ball. It's reducing the pressure. The air underneath the ball is actually lifting it up. It also follows the curve of this turkey baster. While the end of the bat may be a bit flatter, there's still enough of a curve for the air to follow it. So the air pressure is reduced on this end of the bat enough that the atmosphere is able to lift the bat from the lower end. In this example, the moving air is not applying the lifting force. This end might be getting a little bit of lift underneath that knob. Now let's take a look at that airflow over a squared end. We see quite a big difference. The air's not bending like it did over these other objects. Now if I'm relying on air going over the top of an object to levitate it, it's going to be helpful if the surface is curved. Now let me show that with this carrot. The top of the carrot is called the crown, and if it's rounded, it allows the carrot to float very nicely. I'll cut off the crown and we'll try it again. Now it's like that block of wood, no coanda effect. I put a small nail through the top of the crown so I could attach it again. Let's see what happens. In this case, that curve at the top makes all the difference. Well, I hope this gives you some idea for investigating this yourself. Now, there's a lot of science I didn't get to and quite a few objects that I didn't have a chance to show yet. So I'm going to post those in the second video and you got to watch it because some of them are my favorite. Anyway, thanks for watching and come back and see me again. Okay, bye.